He's like, did you just call me baby? It's horrible. It's, it's so traumatic. He's a murderer. I thought it was gonna be very he he ha ha. No. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my first ever Marauders fanfic side series for booktube. In this video, we're going to be reading Crimson Rivers. Objectives are read the fic. It's all about the fic and the fangirling. And two, make it less about the aesthetic. We're just here for the story. If you're here and you're like, who are the Marauders? Buckle up because I'm gonna tell you and everything I'm gonna say leading up to this fic is going to be more and more shocking. The Marauders are Harry Potter's dead dad and his friends. They're not dead in the fix though. It's back when they were alive. It's James Potter, Sirius Black, Remus Lupin, and then we have Regulus Black, Sirius's little brother, and Lily Evans. And I would say that is our main cast of characters. In order to get to this fic, what do you need to read to understand the context, okay? You gotta read the original Harry Potter books and know the lore. And then I would strongly suggest reading All the Young Dudes, which is a canon compliant, which means it goes along with all the Harry Potter books, fan fiction from Remus Lupin's perspective, starting in his first year of school all the way up to when he dies. Then you'll be able to deviate from the plot of the wizarding world and enter into alternate universes because if you're a Marauders fan, you love the character so much that you don't really care what universe you're in. I mean, it depends on the mood because the canon ones are all very sad. It does not end well for them, unfortunately. And there are ones that take place in the wizarding world with alternate endings or more lighthearted. I never read those. Crimson River and hear me out. This is about the Marauders in the Hunger Games. When the story starts, Sirius is a victor. He won the games 10 years ago. We're at the reaping and the universe is a little different than the Hunger Games. They do two contestants. Either way, they reap two of them. It's not necessarily a boy and a girl in this universe and it's not from the ages 12 to 18. I think it's from 15 or 12 or something to 25. Sirius is a victor, he's also their mentor, and Regulus Black and James Potter are reaped for the Hunger Games. The writing in this story is some of the best I have ever read in my entire life. I genuinely think I like this story as much as I like Akatar, which Sarah J Maas is my favorite author. I read it when it was coming out, so I quickly read up to as far as Zar had written. I could not stop reading, and then I had to wait we would get chapters twice a week. It was winter 2022 and it reset my brain chemistry. It was such a fun time. Marauders TikTok was going crazy. Everyone was reading it. Everyone would post about the updates as soon as they happened. This is going to be a completely spoiler filled video. I'm gonna say everything as it's happening. I'm not gonna spoil ahead of time. So if you're reading it along with me, that could be fun. I'm not gonna tell you immediately what happens. I mean, I did tell you that James and Regulus get reefed, but that's in the description for the fix. So you'd find that out on the first page and a half. Something of note is that Zar says anyone with a POV is not going to die. And that is interesting because as the fic goes along, we get more POV slowly. So you're starting to wonder who doesn't have a POV? <laughs> I'm on chapter two, nothing too crazy has happened yet other than what I've already said, which is that the reaping has occurred. Sirius is trying to process it. They really are all trying to process it. And so far James has told Sirius, I'm not coming out. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get Regulus out because Sirius volunteered for Regulus when he went into the games 10 years ago. So James knows that it is so important to Sirius that Regulus stays alive. He's going into the games telling, he told his parents, he's telling Sirius, I'm gonna save Regulus, I'm not coming out of this. Meanwhile, Regulus, he doesn't know James feels this way, but he's telling Sirius, I am going to win. I will take James out if I need to. I hope you know that. They don't really have a good relationship at this time. I think that there's a lot of guilt on Regulus's end and Sirius, I think there's guilt on Sirius's end. They're both emotionally avoidant. <laughs> Vlog. It is a Crimson Rivers update. This fic is quite literally hitting, I want to say just as hard as the first time. Like realistically, logically, it's probably not just as hard because there's nothing like reading something for the first time, but I am blown away and I'm so happy. I'm in my happy place. <laughs> I'm 7% in, I'm on chapter eight out of 75. So not super far at all. I just finished the interviews, okay? And I'm just reminiscing going down memory lane of my first read of this. I thought it was gonna be very hee hee ha ha, but no. When I got to the interviews, 
for the first time two years ago. I said, this is a work of art. This should be put in a museum for future generations to see. And actually, while we're reminiscing, I first started this fan fiction on the plane to Harry Ween at the Kia Forum, fall 2022. So I just have such good memories associated with it. I had already read All the Young Dudes earlier that year and I just like, I clung to that hyperfixation as much as I could until inevitably I couldn't make it last forever, probably because I wasn't reading more fan fiction or anything, which I was trying, but I hadn't found one that like quite altered my brain chemistry quite the same way. There was that aspect of this is my favorite fandom I've ever been a part of, but I haven't found any new content. And then suddenly a new ship, a whole new story with some of the best writing since Shakespeare himself, probably better than Shakespeare. Let's be so for real. <laughs> Remus has entered the picture. He is a servant of the Hallows. He has his mask on. Sirius goes to take his mask off because he always tries to do that to the Hallow servants to give them some free Freedom. Remus stops and takes it off himself and Sirius is flabbergasted. Were you silent or were you silenced? Who would not have that reaction to Remus John Lupin? Beautiful. Andrew Garfield. Meanwhile, Sirius and Regulus are having so much tension. They've barely interacted in the last 10 years since Sirius volunteered for Regulus. Regulus thinks that Sirius regrets volunteering and Sirius thinks Regulus is resentful that he volunteered. So they have a very tricky relationship. Oh, this is a great time to to read a quote. Here it is, and it's right on my Kindle. Okay, this is a quote that Gideon Pruitt said. Something that kept us separate, but it also brought us together as well. When your brother is something like that is sacred. Regulus thinks of him and Sirius, and then, rather ridiculously, what passes through Regulus's mind is one word, a name, James. I just feel bad for James, but I'm also so proud of him. This is my favorite characterization of him that I have ever read. He's being his happy-go-lucky angel boy self, despite the fact that he's knowingly going to the Hunger Games. He wants to die to protect Regulus. Meanwhile, he's fighting the battle between these two brothers who are not very emotionally intelligent, and he's giving Remus relationship advice, so he's carrying everything on his back. I think he's being an avoidant girly pop, because how is he still functioning? Sirius and James have also been training and getting to know the other tributes leading up to the interviews. James is really loving the underdogs. He's making besties. Bless his heart. He met Peter Pettigrew. Vanity. I'm trying to remember some of the others, but I can't. It'll come to me later as we get to know them more. Regulus only likes one other tribute and it is Evan Rossier. I'm just latching on to all of their friendship moments because they're so beautiful. I love how Regulus and James are 25 and 26. It's just nice that they're our age and Marlene and Dorcas are in it as well. I need to talk about them. So we're getting into their relationship and they are hitting it off. There's a lot of tension in the air. The vibes are so good. Anyway, I love that they're closer to my age. I also love that in the Hunger Games aspect though. It is so foul because they still have young teenagers in the game. Sirius is working his charm with the Hallows trying to get money so that he can get donations once the games begin and help out Regulus and James. In between Sirius working the Hallows and trying to handle Regulus and James, he is so tired, bless him. Him and Remus are just doing little domestic chores. Remus is making breakfast, doing laundry. Sirius is whipped, following him around like a puppy. I really like Wolfstar in this fic. I saw this TikTok that said when Wolfstar's the main couple, it's so intense and serious. But when they're the side couple in any fic, they're just like these silly little boys. And that's kind of how this is. They're very unserious, but also, I've read this before. I know it gets very serious very quickly. Not me using the word serious so much. I just know if he was real, he'd be like, you think I'm unserious? All I am is serious. <sighs> we have our three girlies that have been highlighted so far. Pandora, love good. She's like the Effie trinket of this whole thing. Love her, she's so lovable. Dorcas Meadows, she's in charge of their fashion statements. She is just that girl. She's such a baddie in every fic. And then we have Marlene, who is a mentor and one of Sirius's good friends, but she's not well. She's very stressed because her two tributes are young teenagers. It just sucks to be a mentor. Final update is that Sirius was talking to Remus about James and how beautiful and deep their friendship is. And Remus said, I have a best friend like that. Her name is Lily. I am feral. I'm like, hey, girly, love you. Chapter eight is called The Last Night and it's just so good from here. It's the night before the games, the morning of the games, and then they're there. Also, I wanted to say that Zars post chapter comments on his own chapters that he wrote 
are hilarious. I'm about to start reading, but I just feel, not to get too sappy, but the way that Zar's writing is, is so similar to my brain. The banter is so good, but the characters are also all very emotional and they weave in and out of super dramatic conversations and humor to cope. The way they treat each other so gently, that speaks to me. I'm just a sensitive person and I feel like these are sensitive characters. The writing style with my favorite fandom, it just feels like a soft place to land. I've got the Mahogany Apple, aka Draco Talk candle lit, and I am ready to binge my little heart out on this. People don't get to attend their own funeral and yet James has already made himself at home in his grave. I love reading. It just brings me so much happiness. <laughs> read up to chapter 10, so the next time I pick this up, we will be in The Hunger Games. Fan fiction authors are really out here devoting hours of their life and not earning a cent. And they are writing, his mind buzzes dully, but nothing really sticks when it drifts through. It's like his thoughts are just pieces of paper fluttering along with wind, brushing past his fingertips when he tries to grab them, always out of reach. We are not worthy. I'm riveted, I'm obsessed, I'm in love, I've cried, I've laughed, I'm so happy to be here. These characters are everything to me. I would read about them doing anything over and over and it will break my heart every time. Okay, three, two, one, go. Go. I've got my iced chai, I've got my Kindle, and my notes. And it's time to go over chapters 10 through 15 of Crimson Rivers. We're in the arena, but actually just before the arena, we have to talk about how Fabian and Gideon were synod, unfortunately. Czar pulled a Suzanne Collins as soon as James and Regulus were going up the tube, they met their end. That's traumatic. And then they get into the arena and we're learning where the name for Crimson Rivers comes from. And it is that at the center of the arena, there's a cave surrounded by a river of blood with zombie hands inside of it. There are so many cruel nods to canon Harry Potter. For example, in canon, Regulus Black dies in the cave with the Inferi. The hands in the river reference the Inferi. Of course, James and Regulus are immediately split up, but because of that, we do get an Evan Regulus bestie sequence. I feel like it's their version of making friendship bracelets, aka sailing over a blood river and stealing shit from a cave. Then in there, we get a really sweet wolf star sequence, and that is pretty much the only wolf star we've gotten for these five chapters. It's very sweet. Remus is assuring Sirius that he needs to let him take care of him because he knows Sirius is so traumatized right now. They have this really deep talk, which is honestly great, so important for their development, but I was like, get me back into the games. I'm so stressed about what's gonna happen next. Me, who's already read it, I'm still stressed. And then war is over, James goes to find Regulus. You know what, I just skipped over such a big plot point. Regulus killed somebody, he's a murderer. Then the person he murdered turns into a giant spider that tries to kill him. So <laughs> Regulus is an iconic baddie and gets the spider to fall into the Crimson River, which one of my favorite parts, we learned this a few chapters later, is that when Regulus narrowly escapes the spider, he kind of leans back and is breathing heavy and laughing. Then later from a Dorcas perspective, we learn that Sirius leaned over right after that happened and was breathing heavy and laughing in the exact same cadence as Regulus. They said brothers. I love them. James and Regulus are reunited. Thank goodness. That's all we want. That's all the people want. We get some like really wholesome parts of the fic. Some of the best parts of the whole fic, in my opinion. Beatboxing Gate. 
James is beatboxing. Regulus is telling him to shut up. It's so weird because it almost feels like they're on a little hike. They can't wrap their minds around the fact that they're in the Hunger Games. And as a reader, I can't either. So they're having a little life talk. James says, I don't know. Maybe if our lives had gone differently, maybe we would have ended up together. You and me, I mean. That's wishful thinking, isn't it? Regulus thinks about it for a second. And then he says, no, that's not wishful thinking. I think you're right. <laughs> Two things to say. One, that's the most devastating thing I've ever heard. Two, wishful thinking by Gracie Abram. Okay, next up. James finds inner peace when Regulus insults him and that is just everything to me. This quote killed me. All in all, Regulus is having a shit day. Well, yeah, he's in the Hunger Games. <laughs> like he's just fussy and that's what Zara says in his notes. Also, I think it's funny that Regulus is just so annoyed by everything that's going on. Like he's so fussy and irritated. If he could give a review, he would not be giving the arena five stars. Shout out to the James variants. This quote Quote is so personal. It says, there's James, so desperate to do everything he can that he's too much, too relentless, never quitting even when there's nothing he can actually do. Speaking of James, he also becomes a murderer. He has not had an ounce of time to process it. They are going through it right now. So much bad is happening. Regulus cut off Avery's hand. Nobody listens to him. He always says, if you do this, I'm gonna do this. He's trying to be a good communicator, okay? Last update, we have arrived to Bear Trap Gate. The last line of the last chapter was the bear trap shutting on his leg. I know one of the best parts of the fic is coming up, so that feels like a little reward, but it's not really worth it for all the trauma. I mean, he killed a man. They've been hunted by the Death Eaters. Finally, they were going to hide out in a cave and then, bear trap. But Evan is back and I love him, but also I don't know if I want to keep reading because I love him. It is time for chapter 16 through 20. I feel like this is the best part of the whole fanfic. First, let's address the elephant in the room and that is this new James Potter merch that I'm launching. My new emotional support sweatshirt forever. It says Potter's Flying Club, so it's set in the canon universe. And underneath it says an ego the size of the lake with a heart to match it. And then I styled it with these shorts from my shop. I feel like it's just, it's just my new comfort fit for real. Here's the shorts, white sneakers. Let's Let's get into this update. We're continuing from Bear Trap Gate. It's horrible, don't get me wrong, but because of it, we get my favorite pipeline ever, which is don't be a baby to your fine baby. Everyone reading knows the absolute power of that moment. Regulus goes from being so mean to James as always to being tender towards him. And James, even though he's in so much pain, he's like, did you just call me baby? The first time I read that, I got such intense heart flutters. I was like, love is real. Me, who's been happily married for years, I'm like, maybe love does exist. Regulus, James, and Evan are in the cave and Regulus starts screaming at Sirius and he says, if you don't get him medicine, I will rip out your hair until you're bald. He's not messing around. You don't touch Sirius's hair. Next big plot point. Maybe if I never say it, we'll never have to accept it. Regulus and Evan go to distract the Death Eaters. Evan is no more. To me, that was the moment that the Hunger Games became real. I think I was very much sticking to James' narrative of, it'll all be fine, let's be optimist about this. Plus, it was a fan fiction, so I didn't know if Czar would take creative liberties with actually having the games go on, but Evan is gone. Regulus is so broken about it because he never meant to get close to him, but he did. And it's horrible. He's like, I think you, I think you would have been my best friend. Evan said, I've never had one of those. And Regulus was like, I really haven't either. I, no one talked to me. It's horrible. I think I've said it's horrible like five times. My first time reading the fic, I didn't really let myself get attached to any of the original characters. I think as like a coping mechanism, I just thought, let's focus on the main people. This time around, I've been so fond of them. I love them all, especially Evan, Vanity, Matthias, and Irene. I think Matthias and Irene's dynamic is so sweet. They're like siblings. Vanity and James' dynamic, Evan and Regulus's. I could always live without Peter Pettigrew. Peter Pettigrew, they could never make me like you. The juxtaposition between people dying in the Hunger Games and being so unwell to Remus and Pandora making brownies in the kitchen is so wild. It's also very nice as the reader because you get a little break. You get to escape the arena and see how Remus, Pandora, and Sirius are the new golden trio, honestly. We also get James talking to Sirius. Just He's just in the arena hoping Sirius is listening, talking about cake, talking about his emotions. They cannot 
cannot stand to be separated. People live their whole life looking for a friendship like that. I, I could get so emotional just thinking about it. Out of all of the Marauders, I've always been most drawn to James. I can't claim that I am as good of a person as he is because he is Sunshine Angel, but he's the one I want to be like most. I'd say I'm probably a James Sun Remus Moon. Remus or Lily Moon. Speaking of Lily, <laughs> I think that's my next update. Oh wait, not yet, not yet. There's a horrible, foul, painful, evil quote. It's Regulus and it says, he always looks up now, Evan is never there. Why did they have to put that in the fic? <laughs> James sasses Regulus into unknowingly joining up with his allies who have all been hiding out in a cave. Please, James is trying to reassure Regulus that they can all fight. He goes, even Vanity can fight. I've seen it when it was her smacking Peter with a tiny stick. He really is milk in that one. He is so clouded with her and I don't blame him. She's sweetie pie angel girl. We start to see more dynamics unfold and I'm living for this part because as the reader, you're so intrigued. There's only a few Death Eaters left. So you have to wonder what's going to happen. They hatch this plan to go get supplies and Regulus is being the voice of reason. He's like, what is going to happen when they're dead? Are we all just gonna turn on each other? And James just can't even go there. He's just like, no, I don't know. I don't know. There's a fly. We need to talk about the sibling dynamics here. Sibling dynamics. Vanity and James have the best relationship. Little sister, big brother, they're bantering. She's talking to him about wanting her first kiss and that she has a crush on Hodge who's in the arena and he's like, dying inside but trying to be supportive. Then we get Matthias and Irene and they just have really good sweet banter together. They really stuck out to me this time around. And then we get a new POV unlocked. The goddess Lily Evans herself. We find out Lily's alive. We find out she's in the order. Dumbledore is there. He is being himself, which is something. She gets a POV, so we know she's not gonna die. And also it furthers the plot in the story because you have to assume it's similar to District 13. That is the rebellion in this world. But Lily full send thinks Remus is dead. She's 100% sure. And we find out that for the last five years, she's let no one in at all. Brace yourself. We're now at chapter 20. There's a reason it is called Massacre. They are attempting to go to the cave while Peter distracts the Death Eaters. Unfortunately, it does not go well. Peter gets caught by the Death Eaters and as they're beating him, he's a little rat. He says, I know where James and Regulus are. Okay, I know, it's nuanced. He's about to die, he's scared. Maybe he thinks if he gets to the allies, they, he can stand with them, whatever, but Course. You know what I haven't talked about really fast? Vanity found a bug, named her Vespa, their besties. No one is happy about it because the bug will sting you with its deadly venom if you're scared at all, like at all. Anyway, Peter leads the Death Eaters back to the rest of them and the massacre begins. They're all fighting, the bridge is between them, so some are on each side. Regulus and James are both on different sides. Worst thing ever, uh, Hodge, Vanity's crush, slits her throat, she dies, and then James pushes him back but doesn't realize he pushes him into the river. Hodge goes as well. I hate this part, it, it got me so good, okay. Death Eater and Matthias are fighting. Nope, Death Eater and Irene are fighting and Matthias has their crossbow. Matthias is about to shoot the Death Eater but the Death Eater spins at the last second and and the crossbow hits Irene, the one who's like a sibling to them. So then they killed Irene. It's, I don't, I'm speechless. They get dragged off and Regulus is stuck with Irene and Regulus has hated Irene the whole time because he's jealous of her because she was flirting with James. She's just so bantery and iconic. Even when she's dying, she says, put a girl out of her misery, will you? I have chills. And she asks Regulus to finish her off so that she won't be in pain. He's like, why did I ever dislike her? And he says, he's so sorry. And she said, no, it's a mercy. That happens. James is cradling vanity while the cop hel helicopter thing is over them. And he's just sobbing. That Matthias gets dragged into the, I don't know why I'm saying every plot point that happens, but essentially James is not well. One of the Death Eaters drags them off with his hook and then the bridge goes down, leaving Regulus stuck on the inside of the river and he's freaking the hell out. And then he hears a cannon and he's freaking the hell out even more. Regulus is just stuck, like snarling like an animal, unable to cross. And then it zooms out to Sirius's perspective and we get him seeing Marlene just after both of her tributes died. We get this beautiful scene of Dork 
Dorcas running four miles in her slippers and her pajamas to comfort Marlene and they are just so angel girlies. I love them. I forgot to say also, I got so caught up in the Hunger Games plot, but Pandora is just everything to me. She's just like this all-knowing ethereal goddess, which is of course, she's a love good. I feel so much adrenaline, but pain. I love the pain because I know it's fictional, but it feels it was real to me. There are only 10 chapters left in part one of Crimson Rivers. 10 chapters left of this vlog. I hope everyone is doing okay. I'm not, but I also am because this is one of my favorite stories ever. It literally rivals Shakespeare. I think I've already said that. I stand by what I used to think. This is as good as Akhtar to me. This is God here. It changed me. It changed my life. That's it for now. Thank goodness I have the sweatshirt to make me feel connected to James and I'll be back with more updates soon. We are back where we started in the reading room. We're in the final hours of Crimson Rivers part one. I'm on chapter 26 currently. I think I'm gonna read until chapter 30, then give a full update of the last 10 chapters at once. I feel like I need some time to gather my thoughts because it's really scary out here right now. I know I'm a broken record. This is one of the best works of art I have ever read in my entire life. Everything about it is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna keep reading, wish me luck. We are in our final update for the Crimson Rivers video, part one. I did not finish the fic when I thought I would, but I did finish it on the plane to go see Gracie Abrams. I thought that was like some beautiful symmetry, even though it's not like I finished the whole fanfiction, I just read the first games. Reading on a plane is always such a vibe. <laughs> Let's get into the last 10 chapters. Sirius convinces Slughorn to have two victors at the end instead of one. But he's so quick with it. He makes Slughorn think it was his idea. Regulus finds out James doesn't because he's passed out in a cave. And the moment the river freezes, Regulus sprints across to go find James. They reunite and they really have to keep working the romance angle despite the fact that they are both so traumatized. <laughs> then there starts to be more rifts between them. Like they're just not doing well. It's rock bottom time. James is like insisting Peter's not gonna join the Death Eaters, but Regulus, he's a realist, okay? He's like, probably that's what happened, which <laughs> of, of course, in every universe. Eventually they head to the central cave. There's five of them left and things go to hell. And it's just so sad because there's this giant spider in form of one of the previous tributes. The five of them work together to defeat the spider and you think like, oh, a moment of unity, but then immediately turn on each other. Human desire is to help each other, but then they're put in a situation where they are literally opponents. They can't stick together. There's a huge fight. Peter dies, basically all the other three die. And then Slughorn comes on and says, "Never mind. there will only be one victor. It's horrible. It's so traumatic. But James is like, hey, it's fine. Look, I already got stabbed and I'm gonna die. So it's all you Regulus. We've come to the point where I personally played like a prayer choir version 11 times in a row because it fit the situation so well. Regulus jumps into the river. James takes out his vial of poison. He says, save him right now or I drink this, using it as a bargaining chip. So essentially they either get two victors or none. Similar to the original Hunger games books it works and they save both of them but they are both like inches from death and that is the end of the 84th hunger games if you think all is well because the games are over we have now reached the most depressing part of the entire fan fiction okay no one is doing good at all Sirius isn't because he has to say goodbye to Remus same with Remus saying goodbye to Sirius and going back into the prison Regulus is scratched all over his whole body he can't even shower he's scared of water and how it feels like the blood river James just wants to see Regulus so bad but Regulus won't see him and when they see each other all they think of is their trauma from the game but do you know what really was sweet is Sirius goes to see Regulus as soon as he's awake and he like grabs his shoulder shoulders or something, looks him right in the eye and says, I love you so much. In fact, let's read that quote. Listen to me, okay, Regulus? I love you. You're my brother. Of course I love you. Always have, always will, and nothing, absolutely nothing in this world could ever change that. Do you hear me? You're enough for me, and I love you. And then Regulus starts crying, and I feel like this is at least a good turning point for the Black Brothers. Then we have the creation of Remus and Regulus's friendship.
friendship. Regulus needs to take a shower for the interview coming up, but he's so scared. Remus wants to help Sirius by helping his brother. So he says, what if we fill the tub a tiny bit? You've got this. And then he proceeds to sit outside the door and spill tea, spill some hot gossip. Well, Regulus is sobbing and having panic attacks. Something about that moment has Regulus latching on to Remus pretty much forever. He loves him after that point. The night before the interview, James can't sleep. He goes to Regulus' door. All he wants is to see him one time, but all Regulus wants is to not see James. But in the end, they sit on the floor with the doorway between them, have this like final reckoning moment where Regulus says, we can't be together. I can't even look at you without wanting to kill someone after the games. And I've read The Hunger Games. I know this is kind of what happens to Katniss and Peeta as well, but I was not expecting that. And it's really so much ouch. The whole theme of the fic is like, they're always so close, but never quite there. I really just cried so much throughout this whole ending sequence. I remember it being devastating, but it was more devastating than I ever could have thought. Interview goes horribly. Sirius and Remus have to say goodbye to each other. And they get on the train and they go home and James reunites with his parents, thank goodness. And he finally gets that unconditional love. Well, he's been getting it from Sirius, but he finally gets it from his parents. That is the end of part one. <laughs> I can't wait to get into the rest of the story, relive all of that pain, and see how it all plays out as if I don't already know. I have no idea how this video is going to do. I've never posted anything like this, but in a perfect world, I post a part two, so I will get started on that. Let me know if you would like me to see it through and finish it. My biggest hope is that people won't hear about the plot and just disregard it, because look, I know how unserious it seems. I felt the same way, but it's one of the best things I've ever read. So I'm just, I'm just a girl telling you that if you need something good to read, you should choose this fan fiction that is longer than the Bible because it will be worth it. That's it for today's video. Love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye.